guys. It is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. I got a fun one today. We are going to learn how to do Thriller by the great Michael Jackson. So it's Halloween. I need to find some Halloween music. And this is one of the best ones out there. So obviously not a lot of guitar on this track. There is a little bit of guitar. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that too. But most of this is just my own arrangement of what's going on with all the keys and trying to get something that sounds pretty similar to the keys so that you can play on guitar and uh, have some fun playing along with Michael Jackson on Halloween. Um, so that's what this is going to be about. Not all of this is going to be the easiest thing in the world to play because when you're trying to recreate synth parts on a guitar, it usually makes for some kind of hairy chords and stuff, but uh, we'll get there. It's not overly challenging, um, but and I'll give you some ideas on how to perform it as, you, as we go along. Before I do, though, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring the notification bell so you know it's a new video. That way you can like and comment on the lessons. You can watch the lessons all the way through, which really helps because YouTube knows if you're really watching or not. So it's creepy, I know. Anyway, so watch. It really helps. And if you really want to support what I do on YouTube, Join my Guitar Academy. You're going to see a link to that in the description below. My Guitar Academy contains all my guitar courses, complete beginner courses to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, blah, blah, blah. You guys know it. You've heard that me say this a billion times, <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, you know, we all got to make money sometime, right? Anyway, let's get to the track. I am in standard tuning here, um, and we have this whole intro that starts here. So I'm just going to be using kind of a basic clean setting this whole time. No big deal. Um, and you kind of hear like a like a C sharp minor chord, a kind of C C sharp power chord maybe you want to think of, um, just to kind of start everything. You hear the first thing you hear the track, and then you start hearing the key start really building to the. So you can play this as like a, just a C sharp minor at the very beginning of the song when you first hear it. It kind of holds for a second. So that's just a fourth fret on the A, a six on the D and the G, and five on the B. So you're going to see this C-sharp minor type stuff a lot. So and then we get into the actual chords of the intro, which is this. You actually hear that little line on top. So that as that builds up, you hear all those, that same line. Um, not that, geez. Hear that same little melody note, uh, melody going. So we can work that on the guitar pretty well. So we're going to start here um, with this this C minor nine, C sharp minor nine. Chord. So that's the fourth fret on the A, second fret on the D, fourth fret on the G, and fourth fret on the B. So you play just those four middle strings, strum across them, and hold them. But then. Kind of picking across the B to the G to kind of get that melody that they're doing. And we kind of do that same treatment on all the chords. And then from there, we go to a, uh, this is an F sharp minor seventh chord with C sharp in the bass. So the fifth is in the bass here. So that's the fourth fret there on the A, um, fourth fret on the D, second fret there on the G. Now I'm going to play the second fret on the B, not as a bar, because I want to be able to, if you do a bar, it's hard to keep that high E string open. So fourth fret on the A and the D, second fret on the G, and that middle finger is going to play the second fret there on the B. And you want the high E with it. So then you can strum across those, and I'm hitting that high E to the B string to get that melody going on there. And then it gets a little bit easier. We go to an F sharp major chord with C in the bass. So it's a second inversion. Um, so that's just the fourth fret there on the A and the D. Uh, third fret on the G and a second fret across the uh, B and the high E. And you're still kind of strong chord and then high E to B for the melody. Alright, and then we're going to take it to a C-sharp uh, um, diminished 7 chord. Now that's how he's keeping C-sharp in the bass for almost everything. So this chord is the, uh, it's a little bit tricky to grab. Uh, you, go, you want to bar across four strings, from the high E string across to the D string on the 2nd fret. 
All right, and then on the fifth, on the A string, you play the fourth fret there. And then you'll play the third fret there on the G, and then the, the third fret on the high E. So that's fourth on the A, second on the D. Um, I'll, I'll simplify this chord in a second for you if you want. Uh, third fret on the G, second fret on the B, and third fret on the high E. Or you can just play it like this. Just remove that C sharp in the bass. Just because it's kind of hard to jump to that. You can just go. Um, kind of do it like that. It sounds fine. All right, and then we get into this main riff, which is kind of the chorus of the song. Look like this. So um, now that, the reason I'm playing these things in a certain way, because I want that top note. You want to hear that. So we have an ascending chord progression. Just C sharp up to E. And, um, so it's and with a descending melody. So you, there's different ways you can do this, but the way I kind of like it the best is in just using basic uh, chord shapes. Is uh, we start with the C sharp minor chord at the ninth fret of the um, well the ninth fret of the guitar, and then uh, just bar across and then play the eleventh fret on the A and the D in front of it. So it's just a C sharp minor chord, just like we did here, but way up here. Because we want that note on top. And then it goes to an E major chord. Now I'm going to play it like this. Once again, I'm not doing a bar here, because that's kind of hard generally to you can do it, but to get that high note not to get muted out, it's better just kind of play this note with an individual finger. So a, a open E, seventh fret there on the, um, you're gonna bar really the seventh fret from the A to the E, but you're gonna play nine on the B, nine on the G, and nine on the D. So you get that full, that the proper melody note on top, and hit this chord again, and then, Here, this is an F sharp major chord. We have the ninth fret there on the A, and now you can do the bar, no problem. Eleventh fret across the D, G, and the B. You want the B string to be the highest note. That melody note is the highest note. And then we go to, back to that, to that C sharp minor chord. Uh, but once again, we want this note, the B string, to be the highest note. So we have the First, it's all the way to high E string, and then, and then, then the melody is on the B string. So don't pat, pick past the B string. So it's a good little challenge. All right, so it just does that much of it first, and then we get to the verse. Now, the verse has three main things going on. And the, the chords for it are kind of strange, especially the first half of the verse each time. The main thing in the verse, though, is the bass line. So I think if you're going to do, if you have one guitar, just play the bass line. That's what everybody recognizes, what's the loudest thing in the mix. The reason why you can't really tell the chords are that odd is because they're so low in the mix um, when they're these little synth pads. But I'll talk about them in a second. You're not going to believe it. Like, is, really, is it really that way? When I actually play you the chord over the vocal line, it sounds like... It should be reversed, but um, you'll see what I mean. But the main thing is the bass line. So just crank on this thing. So we have just 4-2-4 four, four on the A string. Then go 2-4 on the D. And then back over to the 4 on the A, and that's it. person anyway so let me talk about the chords so the chords for this verse are just a c sharp minor seven chord to an f sharp major chord in 
end at the very end. There's a B major chord. Um, so let's look at the chords first, then I'll talk about how weird it is at the beginning of the verse, first half of the verse, in both verses. So we have the bar, this, this, it's just like this minor, C sharp minor chord we played earlier, but you actually want to pick up the pinky, so that note on the uh, G string is at the fourth fret now. So it's just a bar at the, it makes it a C sharp minor seven chord. So, um, bar at the fourth fret, sixth fret on the D and fifth fret there on the B. So you're just picking from the fifth, fret, fifth string across. And then, to an F major chord. So we did this in the intro. So that was the third chord in the intro. And so what's weird, it kind of... It does that. Then it locks in. So it sounded weird. What's happening is it's almost like he's had a melody that's based over um, the C sharp minor chord tones, most based around that, but he's playing the F sharp major chord underneath it is the pad. And then when he goes to the F sharp major chord tones in the melody, <laughs> the harmony underneath it goes up to the C. So maybe it's for effect. I don't know how, it's like, it's very odd sounding when you really pay a lot of attention to it. They have it very low in the mix. It's probably trying to create that eerie quality. So it sounds really dissonant because it's because of that. But then the second half of the verse, or you can consider maybe that's the pre-chorus when it goes in, when it goes back, it settles on that F sharp, and then and then it now it's like the melody, the vocal melodies line up with the chords. So the so if you listen to it close, you're gonna see that happening. So it just starts off with this, and then it goes. Most of this chord hits you hear they're on that F sharp, and then he starts to. Sounds weird, I know. Listen to it, and, and you'll, uh, I'll make you a believer. Now, after you've done that, like four times, it ends with a... It ends that C sharp, we'll go from that C sharp minor to a B major chord instead of the, to transition to the chorus. And you can just play that like the fourth fret on the D, G, and the B, second fret on the high E. Now, we did have some actual guitar in here, and we have this little thing that starts up over the verse, looks like this. Really kind of spanking that guitar tone. So that is just six, four, six on the D string. Like three times. And then play. 4-6 on the G. All right, then we get to the chorus again. So the chorus is going to start the same that we did in the intro, uh, but there's a, it kind of moves on a little bit more from there. So we have this. Song. So, start the same chorus that we did earlier. So, we've already covered this. So, when you get to that C sharp minor, you're now going to move it down here to the second fret, full bar at the second fret, play the F sharp major chord. So, the uh, fourth fret there on the A, the D, and third fret there on the G. Then pick up the note on the G string. So, it's just the barred note now, the second fret on the G makes it an F sharp minor chord. So I'm F sharp major, F sharp minor. And then back to the chorus again. And then 
then back to the F sharp major. Now before we go to the F sharp minor here, it does this quick little ending. So that is going to be a A dominant seventh chord. So that's a full bar at the fifth fret, seventh fret on the A, sixth fret there on the G, eighth fret there on the B. So hit that. Well, that's the one I like to play. And then take that same chord down the second fret. And then we play uh, basically um, an A over a B. Um, so that's just the second fret across the A, D, G, and the B. So all together. So um, after that chorus, we go back to the same verse. So the verse is played the same way with those funky chords um, that seem to fall in the wrong place for a, a bit. I know it's not the wrong, I know they're doing it intentionally, but it's just very, very odd when you, when you just really focus on that. Um, and then, um, so then it gets to the same chorus, or, and then we get to this little bridge, which is probably my favorite part of the song, favorite chord wise. Um, so it looks like that. So we're coming out of the... start here with the, where are we at? So oh, there's a little bass line. So coming out of the, the chorus, there's a 4-2 on the low E on the A. It's our, and then 1-2, 0-2 on the low E, the into an F sharp major chord. So that same F sharp major we recorded. And so it goes from the F sharp to, you can just play the, uh, just a G sharp note, I guess. Fourth fret there, a little bass line, a little passing bass note. At the fourth fret on the low E. And then, then it goes to an A add nine. So the easiest way to play this, open A string, um, uh, seventh fret there on the D, sixth fret on the B, open B, that's the nine, and then the open high E. So with this. to a B major chord up to that C sharp minor chord. So with this. So it's kind of cool, the little bass line gets chromatic there. So it's gonna, after this, this uh, C sharp minor chord, which we've done before. We basically are going to move this down to the seventh fret and then play an E major. So it's really an E major in second version, the chord it goes to. So it's a seventh fret on the low E, barring the ninth fret across the D, G, and the B. And then it goes to an A sharp minor seven flat five. So this is a full bar at the sixth fret. Then you play the seventh fret on the A string and then the ninth fret on the B. So from here. And then we go to an A major seventh chord. So this is gonna be the um, fifth fret there on the low E, fifth fret on the B, and the sixth fret on the G and the D. So you're gonna mute that A string with your index finger. Or you can just do it like this. That's pretty easy, right? Open A string instead. And then we're gonna go to a G sharp sus4 to a G sharp major. So that's just a full bar at the fourth fret there. 
And you can play the sixth fret in front of it on the A, D, and the G. And then resolve that, you're gonna move, take the note on the G string and move it down to the one fret. So in order to do that, you kinda gotta readjust your fingers. So it goes down the sixth fret there on the A and the D with those two fingers, and then the middle finger grab that fifth fret there on the G. All right, so now after the verse again, we get to the last chorus of the song. Um, and this one's just same progression. But here, this first ending, they're gonna repeat the chorus again. So they have this kind of extended ending that goes. thing. So it's the same first three chords, that A7, F sharp 7, to that A over B. But then we come up here and grab an E diminished triad. So this is, uh, these are kind of harder to pick up because it's a little quick little keyboard stabs or vocal stabs and it's just really, really quick. But um, I'm picking up an E, a dom, e d diminished triad here. So that is seventh fret there on the A, eight on the D, nine on the G, eight on the B. So after that, um, A over B, you come to this E diminished, and then just to a standard D major chord. So that's just the fifth fret there on the A and bar the seventh fret across the D, G, and the B. And then we get to the... So this is a B7 sus4, so it's a, uh, it's a it's they, they kind of hold that. So that's a full bar at the seventh fret, and then the ninth fret on the A in front of it, and the ninth fret on the G. That's the sus. And then back to the same chord. All right, so it kind of, at the, at the chorus, it still ends it the same way. And then we have the Vincent Price part that ends the song. Um, <clears throat> so we can do some chords there too, yay. So we, underneath the, the whole Vincent Price section, all the way to the end of the song, is this little progression, looks like this. So it's just going to repeat that. Now I'm finger styling it. Now I like to kind of tuck the pick and with my, hold it with my middle finger. And then I can do finger picking. So um, I'm still having this, this. So the C sharp's going to be in the bass the whole time, right? And we start with this C sharp minor chord. So I'm doing a bar here for, across the fourth fret. So that's getting me that high E fourth fret. And I got that fourth fret on the A. But the fifth fret on the, on the B, and I'm going to be playing that with my... Uh, middle finger, and I'm going to use my pinky for the sixth fret there on the uh, G string. So just like that. The reason why I'm using that pinky there is because now to get to the next chord, all I got to do is put my ring finger down on the fifth fret there on the high E string. So they're real close. All right, from there, we still have this. We're gonna now play the sixth fret there on the G, seventh on the B, and seventh on the high E string. And then resolve that down to, yeah. So that's uh, this, and then what we're gonna do is, we're really just taking the top note, moving it down. So it's gonna be that sixth fret on the high E, so you get to replace that other note with that pinky there, the seventh fret on the B. Sixth fret on the G, and still that, C sharp, the fourth fret on the A string. So, and then just repeat those four chords all the way to the end of the song. All right, so once again, not the easiest thing, kind of a little, kind of ties your hands in knots, but. If you want to do something that's similar to an actual keyboard-driven track, you're going to have some 
typically some challenging stuff to play on the guitar, but it's a really good workout though, and it's a great song. And if, if you can pull this off at a party, people uh, will be quite impressed, I'm sure. All right, that says you have friends. I don't have any friends, so I don't have any parties. So I just play this stuff for my dog, and he doesn't care. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.